what does John Lennon have to do with Edinburgh? Well, the answer might surprise you. John Lennon would come up to Edinburgh uh, from Liverpool, he'd get the bus to the bus station where his cousin Stan Parks would meet him. Uh, he would then bring him here to Ormadale Terrace um, and he would spend a week here and Stan and John Lennon would be seen attending the rugby games at Murrayfield Stadium, uh, hanging around Princess Street Gardens or taking in a movie on Gorgie Road. His uh, aunt, who was Stan, Stan Park's mother, she was married to a local dentist, uh, Uncle Bert, and uh, they stayed here on Omerdale Terrace. The remainder of the summer would be spent at Uncle Bert's small holding, which was up north. Later in his life, John Lennon came back to Edinburgh to perform two concerts with the Beatles. Um, they performed at the ABC on Lothian Road, which is now the Odeon Cinema. These concerts were in April and October 1964. Now, after the concerts, the rest of the band opted to stay at a local hotel, but John Lennon, having a local connection to the area, decided to stay with his cousin, Stanley Parks. And it was here he stayed at Bryce Crescent. Now, the story goes, that John Lennon got up early one morning and decided to go for a packet of cigarettes down the road at the local RS McCall's. And uh, when he went to the shop, the shop assistant almost fainted when she realised who it was, John Lennon. John Lennon returned to Edinburgh in 1969 with Yoko Ono uh, to introduce her to his Edinburgh-based family. Um, the story goes that it wasn't a well-received visit and that Uncle Bert just simply couldn't warm to Yoko Ono. Who can say why? So now that you found out all about John Lennon's connection to Edinburgh from his um, coming here as a, as a child uh, during the summer holidays, uh, from his coming back and having his concerts with the Beatles, um, as well as bringing Yoko Ono back to meet the family, um, a story goes also that uh, John Lennon also tried to buy uh, Ormondale Terrace um, but the deal never went through, so we don't know why that is, um, but maybe he dreamed of um, having his retirement here in Edinburgh, which would have been a pretty interesting character sort of cutting about, because um, he was an interesting guy. And if you want to find out more about John Lennon, then I highly recommend this book um, by Philip Norman. Uh, it's got all the details of his life, um, from being a war baby, uh, to his uh, troubled relationship with his own father, um, and being raised by his auntie. Um, as well as it's got the development of the Quarry Band, or sorry, the Quarrymen, uh, which was his first sort of skiffle band, uh, and it progresses to the formation of the Beatles, all the different members that were in it before it got its lineup. Uh, one thing that I didn't know about the Beatles is that they kind of got their first big break uh, performing in strip clubs in uh, Hamburg. So if you ever go to Hamburg, there's loads of Beatles stuff out, and uh, that's why. Now, that, this really developed them as a band, so, you know, whilst some other bands had kind of spent, you know, a little bit of time gigging. The Beatles were performing three, four times a day for maybe three, four years. So, you know, it really sort of developed them as musicians. Um, anyway, I digress. But um, it's got everything in the book. It's got all his LSD stage, uh, stages of his life, his uh, relationship with Yoko Ono, his uh, troubled relationship with his first wife, uh, his relationship with his son, Sean, uh, and his troubled relationship with his son, Julian. Uh, now, one thing that John Lennon always regretted was um, what was that relationship with Julian? That he'd never kind of spent as much time with him as he could have. So when Yoko Ono was pregnant, John Lennon decided that he was going to step up and be his primary carer. Uh, and this has always kind of sat with me because he always said it was the best thing that he ever did. Um, so when my son was born, I took the time off to be my son's primary carer. Uh, and it's probably the best thing that I've ever did. Um, so anyway, this has been our history, your story. I've been Alan, uh, and this has been John Lennon's Connections to Edinburgh, and if you want to find out more, go get the book.